Hi, everybody. Are you looking for love this Thursday night? Well, you're going to love this show. And I already love it because we have such a panel tonight for you of experts in the love category, especially during COVID. We're calling Love and Lockdown, How to Find Love During COVID-19. Look at all these fabulous people that we have. We have a psychologist. We have a matchmaker. And we have several couples that are just going to make your heart melt. Um, but the bottom line is if you're lonely or if you are in a relationship and you're struggling because of COVID-19 and being maybe stuck in a small place during the pandemic, this show is for you. We're going to have things that you can do, tips, and we want to hear from you. Send us your questions. This is an interactive show. We want to help as many people as possible. That's why we've assembled such a panel of experts. But first, I want to show you Dinah S. Dinah S. I mean, let Talk about romantic. This is this. She got married, okay, in Roslyn. Take a look. These, this is what her wedding looked like. She had to provide masks that were specially monogrammed, hand sanitizers. You know, we always get little tchotchkes. Um, and but you know, it, it's kind of sweet. But it's also the new reality and the new world that we're living in, um, where we're of course focused on safety, but we still want to find love and we still want to maintain our romance. So first off. Uh, matchmaker, matchmaker, one of our best, Jennifer Zucker. She is the CEO, co-founder of Project Soulmate. Amanda, our lovely producer, found you. And I can't believe we got these experts tonight on such short notice. What do you tell people who are watching who, you know, pretty much they are lonely and they're looking mm -hmm. for love and COVID-19 has really cramped their style? <laughs> yeah. So I always tell love, there's no timing for love. So you should be out there looking, whether you're online, which you should, everyone should be online these days. And, you know, give everybody a chance. At this point, you're not meeting them in person unless you decide to go for a walk in the park. But do a FaceTime, do a phone call, give people a chance because people are out there and they want to really meet someone now. Everyone's lonely because it's been a really mm -hmm. tough few months. It's just such a weird time. And the top tips, like if someone just the takeaways, if they're watching right now, we're waiting for questions for our panel. What would you tell them immediately? Immediately? Do not stop love. Go out there, you know, even with your mask, you're walking around, you're a lot of people are even out at bars having drinks outside, like be social, flirt. It's okay. You have your mask on. And we're all about like meeting people in person if you're in a park and you're six feet apart. And then at that point, when you're, you have a connection with somebody, you could figure it out, you know, both get tested. <laughs> <laughs> you know, get tested to go. Okay, yeah. that's an interesting one. Yeah. Michael, Lisa, all of you I know are either looking for relationships. Give us your questions, we will answer them live. It's quite, a, so how do you stay safe? Obviously, the other day I was FaceTiming someone and I was wearing my mask. I forgot that I was, and I'm not contagious when you're FaceTiming, but little things like that, you know, you just, what can you tell people? How do you stay safe and date during COVID-19? Okay, so if you're really, really nervous, it's, uh, it's all about really getting to know somebody on Zoom and on the phone. And to be honest, it's actually, we, and we have always thought that an emotional connection is much easier to make when you're on a phone, you're texting, and then you finally meet and there's that connection there. So having that emotional connection is great. And then you're also not judging people based on their outfit, their bodies, you know, you're really getting to know someone on an emotional level, which is the most important part at the end of the day. And then the rest comes obviously. I remember dating so long ago and I would I would wear like these terrible shoes that were uncomfortable. Now, you know, I'm not even wearing shoes. That's a, that's a bonus. And so you just have to exactly. kind of look good from here up, which is a bonus too, I think, right? But, um, oh, I'm so excited about Dr. Marissa Cohen is here. Dr. Marissa Cohen, she's a relationship coach. I'm gonna be calling you. You have all the answers and you're an author. You have several books. I mean, you are the expert. How do you keep that spark alive when you're maybe trapped in a one bedroom apartment with your loved one? Yeah, it's definitely a challenge, especially for us New Yorkers, where we might be in these small apartments and it's definitely hard to maintain boundaries and find our own space. So honestly, to keep that spark alive, it's all about fostering your connection. And you can do that by, like I said, maintaining boundaries, prioritizing self-care and also prioritizing care of one another, and also just expressing your needs 
and open and honest communication is really, really key. Ooh. So being able to rely on another is one of enhance the relationships. Marissa, what happens if you're like, you know, if you're being open and honest, you're going to get into trouble sometimes because you could hurt somebody's feelings. But you're saying in the long run, it's good to kind of kind of rip the bandaid off and be like, hey, you're getting on my nerves and then create that boundary that you need and maybe do a date night. Can you still yeah, do a date night? Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, to what you just said, sure, you might get into some uncomfortable territories in expressing your needs, but being sure to really listen to your partner, validate your partner, um, allowing your partner to air whatever he or she needs from you uh, is really, really important and key and definitely prioritize having those date nights. Yeah. Trish Medina. Oh my God. I love what she's saying. Al, are you reading this? She's saying it's so hard. I, I think we've struck a accord with viewers because it is so hard to maintain a relationship right now during COVID-19 when you're in these, you're working from home, you can't leave home. It's very claustrophobic, right, Al? Absolutely. And I actually see a great comment from Danielle who says, I want to find my soulmate more than anything, but where on earth can I even do that when I can't go to a restaurant, I can't go to a bar, I can't even meet people outside or at an activity like I used to. So Marissa, what do you, what would you say to Danielle? Video dating. A lot of the apps um, had video dating before COVID, but we're starting to see that it's more and more prevalent now. And those who didn't have that option have moved into these online video dates. And what's really interesting is I'm currently working with a dating site. We're collecting longitudinal data just to examine how video dating is changing the game. And so far, anecdotally, we're seeing that conversations are getting a lot more intimate. People are really getting to know one another prior to even meeting in person. And this can lead to much greater relationship satisfaction. Yeah, I love that, um, Marissa. Doc, you, you are so scientific and that's exactly what we need. We need the, we need the facts right, right now because we need all the help we can get. And Jillian from New Jersey, Jillian and Mark, you're 23, right, Jillian? Jillian? Yeah. And, yeah. and you're from New Jersey and you're getting married next week? Oh my yeah. gosh, oh my yeah, gosh. I'm very excited. Yeah, extremely excited. We're yeah. supposed to have so how is a Facebook word. Sorry, go ahead. You must go be ahead. so excited. I mean, I, but yeah. how have things changed? I want to know what you're doing because COVID-19, how did it change everything for you? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We were supposed to have a much larger wedding, 160 people, August 30th, all of our family and friends. And of course, it's not exactly possible right now. We want to be safe and everything, but still want to make it a little bit special. So we'll be having just 10 of us, just the parents and us, just doing a small little ceremony in the backyard. Just add some light to this. Oh, I love it, Mark. And you proposed to her, I believe, during a trip, right? It's quite a romance. Yeah, uh, we went to uh, Israel about a year and a half ago, uh, and I proposed to her on a rooftop in the old city of Jerusalem. Can we get a smooch? Can you guys smooch? <laughs> Don't smooch me or the, the camera, smooch each other. I wanna see you guys smooch. <laughs> Every, all couples need to smooch during the show. And that includes, I hate to say, oh, and I wanna mention a stat, 78% of couples get married between May and October. So this is the hot time, right, Al? Any questions you got going on? Absolutely. I just see a lot of people saying congrats. Trish says congrats. Yeah. Alejandro says congrats. They're so excited for you. Um, and actually, question from, for Jennifer is, how important is it for couples to still keep their wedding date who may have been affected by the pandemic? Do you think that a lot of couples, as they're postponing, is it best to still postpone? Or do you think that you know couples should still celebrate the day in some way? What do you think? Well, we th uh, I believe that, and this, uh, along with my partner, we think that you should. We actually have one of our clients, they got married on a roof deck. They had literally chairs set up and had probably like 10 people there and they were all wearing masks, all people that are close to them. And they were it was a beautiful wedding. So you know what? And then down the road, if you wanted something big, you could do that down the road, but go for it. Oh no, Mon, I think you're muted. The fear. Um, and and to, I guess to inspire all of us, Elle, we save 
I think the grand finale with our Jeffrey and Gloria, we did a story with them on Monday. And let me tell you, they are national celebrities. They went instantly went viral because of their engagement. 76 year old Jeffrey Miller proposed to 71 year old Gloria Alexis. And we have their first live prime time interview right here on our Facebook show, which is quite a coup because I know they were coveted. And here they are uh, joining us from Canarsie, their assisted living facility in Canarsie. Hi, Jeffrey. Hi, Gloria. Hi. Gloria. Hi. Hi. Now, I don't know, Al, if you can show our viewers exactly what, how romantic Jeffrey Miller really is. 76, he, uh, he has found the love of his life, he says, and yeah. he realized it. Um, when she got sick during COVID-19 due to kidney issues and just missed her so completely. Let's do it. So he concocted this little uh, this little idea and then everyone helped him. You know how the world conspires to help you when you have a plan? Mm -hmm. Well, that's the case here for our Jeffrey Miller, our romantic. The Take a look. Ah, then the ring. And he sealed the deal with a kiss. 76 year old Jeffrey Miller popped the question to his true love, 71 year old Gloria Alexis, on August 6th, surrounded by staff and friends where they live here at the Amber Court Assisted Living Facility in Canarsie. Something about it that made me happy. We met the couple Monday, and they are completely smitten. Miller says they have quite a love story. They met at the facility, have been friends for three years. Staff tells us they are inseparable. During the pandemic, Alexis got sick and had complications with her kidneys. Miller said that's when he realized he loved her. I told him that I have a surprise for you. Miller said it was the thought of losing her that was too much to bear. As the world seemed uncertain, one thing became more and more clear to him. Alexis was the love of his life, and he better put a ring on it. I love her. They can't even talk to me. Their message to others looking for love during the pandemic. You're never too old to find love. I'm 76 years old. He's 71. But you're never too old to find love. Never give up. Never give up. Right. Keep the faith. You always find somebody out there. We love Never them give so up, much. Bob. So love, right? Love conquers all. It's never too late to find love. And Jeffrey and Gloria join us now live. We have to say a special thanks to Amber Ford and Canarsie for giving us this exclusive live interview with Jeffrey and Gloria. Jeffrey and Gloria, first I'm going to talk to you, Jeffrey. You're the romantic here. You, How much do you love this woman? And tell me why you love Gloria so very much. Well, I love her because... I felt I felt good with her. She, when I, when I, when I, I'm happy with her. I feel, uh, I feel good. Oh my God, you're melting my heart. Did you say, I know, she just makes you happy, right, Jeffrey? And what? Gloria, when I asked you, how do you feel when you kiss Jeffrey? You said, he's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. I think he's more into you than him. I think that's the secret too. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. All right. Ladies, if you're watching, I want to hear claps for Gloria because that's exactly right. We want the guy to be more into us, I think. I think the relationship experts might not agree with me. But Jeffrey is so smitten. You love this woman so much. When you smooched her, I could feel the electricity coming off of you. Okay. Right. What's your advice? I, What's your advice, Jeffrey and Gloria, to, to people at home if they're thinking it's too late, it's over for me, I'm never going to find love, it's COVID-19, it's hopeless. What's your message, Jeffrey? You, you never, you never too old to find love. You never, you never too late. You're never too. It's never too late. And um, oh, I just, I love you guys. Mark. What, what do you guys think, Mark? What are you? What are you getting from this relationship? Hearing Jeffrey and Gloria's amazing romance. What are you getting from it, Mark? Uh, I guess the, uh, the the bottom line the bottom line is that uh, love finds a way. 
Yeah, it's just so, it's so amazing. And Marissa and Jennifer, you know, talking to experts, there's nothing like the example that they're giving us right now um, uh, of what love really is and how it does conquer all. Marissa, all your scientific research, what would you say about uh, hope and giving people hope at home? Of course, we love Jeffrey and Gloria, but what kind of hope can you give people watching? It's just so important to have a caring, intimate relationship. And, you know, it's just a testament to how important love is for not only our connections to others, but our, our own well being. And, Monica, I actually see a question uh, That's here so coming true. Through. And, Jennifer? Jennifer, do you have any do you have any final words, Jennifer, of hope for people who are lonely during this COVID-19 during the crisis? Yes, do not give up on love. Love comes in to you in crazy ways and you know what it is what we're born we're born into this world giving getting love and that's what we're supposed to do is constantly look for it and hopefully find our one of our many soulmates. Yeah, and Jennifer, I'm actually seeing a question too from Facebook coming in from Doris who says, what about long distance relationships? Like what can somebody in a long distance relationship do right now to kind of keep up that spark? FaceTime, Zoom obviously, a lot of cute text messages, you know, keep it a little exciting. You know, I don't know if you're into that. Just keep the love going on, you know, when you're on FaceTime especially and it's later on at night. <laughs> Yeah, keep it a little exciting. Trish Medina just said, you know, you really have to screen people. Just, I mean, we did this before, you know, we were always weary of who we were matched, you know, getting matched with. But even now during COVID-19, that's even, that's it, that's still an important factor. So she's talking about how do you make sure, Jennifer, that you're, who you're meeting is who you're meeting and with all this virtual stuff that you got to do. Yeah, you know, that's why, it's really important either way with or without COVID is just to get to know somebody on the phone, like see, you never know, you might have people in common that you know, but whether it's COVID or not, you're never going to know really who the other person is until you get to really spend time with them and get to know them. So that shouldn't be an excuse. You know, if anything, now's the time where we believe you should really get out there and get to know people on an emotional level and, um, you know, it's everyone's out there looking for love now. They're really lonely. Yeah, it's true, isn't it? This is like a really yeah. lonely time. I hate to say it. And this is why this show is hot. So, Crystal. And one more thing I wanted to say going back. My mom actually always told me, you need a man that loves you even like the tiniest bit more. Because men's eyes wander more than women and women's <laughs> love grows with the flowers the bears the teddy bears all the little things so i will actually say my mom told me that my entire life so and i found that person but I, I do love him just as much but it, you know it's always nice oh uh, marissa do, do you i mean you're you're the scientific you're the expert the uh the relationship coach does that mesh with your findings and your research <laughs> Well, it's important to definitely have equity within the relationship. I think, um, you know, when we get into these important relationships, it's best to just invest our all into that relationship oh, and that, that it comes back to us. So true. Just invest your all and give it your all. And, you know, mm -hmm. I thank you, Kathy, Trish, everyone who is just loving this show. Please share it with anyone that you think would uh, benefit from some tips that we've given. Um, and I have to say, can we just do a wrap? Everybody clap your hands, do emojis for our beautiful couples just about to get married. Jillian and Mark, they're in their 20s and they're about to start their whole life, right, Al? Thank you for finding them. They were the most beautiful couple. And then we have Jeffrey and Gloria who are starting their love um, at the eight in the 70s. And, you know, I know Gloria said she had lost her husband uh, and he has been married before. But you know what's key, Al, which I'm starting to see is you just never, ever give up on finding love. Never. I think that's the that's the 
I got that from you and thank you so much. I mean, I what a great show. And if people, if you find love after the show, I want you to, we want to follow up on you. You let us know. We're going to continue to follow this. And thank you for everyone, our doctor, for being here tonight. We know how coveted you were. And then of course, our beautiful couples. We wish you all the best. And I know Jeffrey and Gloria, we're going to be at your wedding with our Pix11 cameras for <laughs> at five o'clock. I have a feeling. I hope I'm invited. Am I invited? 